Hey guys, this is Austin, I'm the director of the Creek Film, and we're here at the Creek Film headquarters, aka my office. Today you're going to get a behind the scenes look at the short film. I got way too serious. I got way too dramatic. You're going to get a behind the scenes look at the short film Wicked. <laughs> so how does it feel to be dead, Jeremy? I've been dead a lot of times. <laughs> I'm keep it, keep it right behind. I'm about to put a bag over your head. Over, kind of pull back, don't kill Don't kill Back in the summer, uh, I think it was June, one of our interns, Gabe Fusen, He's been doing a lot of work for our student ministry up front. And so back in June, um, he came to us and basically said he had this idea for um, a bumper. Uh, basically a short film that he wanted to do um, and he wanted to direct it and he had never directed before. He brought this idea to us and it was for uh, a series that was going to be called Wicked. The series was about like different wicked people throughout the Bible. One of the people that Ryan talked about was uh, Jezebel and she was a beautiful person on the outside but was actually very wicked on the inside. We told him, hey, go write, go write a screenplay. Uh, write this down so we can see what the story is and how you want to tell it. And so he did that, he came back, and uh, we went through, um, I don't know, a few different versions of that screenplay. And We wanted to convey that same wickedness that was in Jezebel through this very weak, petite, innocent looking girl who was lost in the forest. Um, we wanted to make her seem like there was no way she could ever hurt anybody, but actually in the end she was the, the killer instead of the, the man who on the outside appeared to be a very sketchy, shady, not someone you would pick up on the side of the road type of looking man. So we got the screenplay nailed down, knew what we wanted to do, and then uh, we turned Gabe loose to, to go find his talent, his actors. Katie, the, the girl in it, that was her first time ever acting, and she did a phenomenal job, like, better than I could have ever asked for or I ever expected out of whoever was going to do the part. And she honestly ended up being like a last second shot in the dark, like, well, we'll see how this goes. You know, I hope to God it works out. We needed to be able to um, give this guy who turns out to not be the creep that you think that he is, um, these three marks on his arm or somewhere on his body um, to be able to communicate that this girl had been the killer all along. She had, um, you know, played this guy and murdered him and left her mark. And so we needed to be able to put these marks on this guy. And one of our um, producers, Courtney Sidwell, she basically took it upon herself to uh, learn how to do it. And she watched some YouTube videos and read some stuff and she ordered some different makeup stuff from Amazon. And so for like a few weeks before the shoot, she was running around the office. She would come in to our offices and she would have, look like she had a cut on her arm. Did you put your stamp? Oh, okay. Uh, what'd you cut it on? Paint. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> That was the test. That was the test to see if it was good. <laughs> Wait, we have to put wounds for a shoot. It works. We showed up to the scene where we were going to shoot at about 7 o'clock in the evening and unpacked everything and carried a whole lot of equipment down about a quarter mile to where we actually shot at. Once we got everything set up, it was probably about 10 o'clock. We started shooting then and didn't get done shooting until about 3 a.m., something like that. And then finally got everything loaded up and back to the church by about 6 a.m. Everybody worked super hard, even as it got super late, you know, nobody complained or anything. And it was, it was really cool to see how everybody just kind of gritted their teeth and, and worked their hardest to to make this happen. And that's the great thing about 
um, our team here um, at the creek is that people just do what they have to do. Um, Jared Adams was there. Um, Jared, you know, is fully capable of probably shooting this himself and writing this himself, but he was there um, to support Gabe and to support up front. And uh, Jared ran the boom, uh, uh, did all the audio and captured all the audio for uh, Wicked. And then there was Bruin Jones, who was there wafting haze and running the haze machine. We had one generator, which was a putt-putt quiet generator for the lights, and then we would have had one huge, heavy, loud generator for our haze machines. So obviously we couldn't run the haze the whole time because the generator was so loud. It would start the generator. Um, <laughs> every time we needed haze before the scene. And then we would just have to have somebody yell up at him from down where we were shooting at and be like, you know, turn off the haze and... We got a step down, man. All right, kill haze. Hey, in, run. And, uh, you know, we were giving him <laughs> a hard time all night because he couldn't hear us, he was standing right beside this loud generator and we would yell for him to turn it off and he wouldn't hear us and we'd be like, turn it off, turn it off. Uh, right. Actually, if you can go ahead and fall, that'd be awesome. Okay. <laughs> it ended up looking really good, but it was definitely a, a pain in the butt to have to constantly turn on a haze and turn it off and remember so everything's not inconsistent. I'm feeling good. It's also a miracle I haven't tripped yet. One thing is almost set uh, our um, actor Jeremy on fire when I was uh, pouring a little gasoline on the fire. So that wasn't good. He probably lost his eyebrows. We basically never got a good fire going, and so we had to pour gasoline on the fire to, to, to get it to produce enough light because there were parts of the scene at the fire where we were, um, you know, only using the fire to light him because we wanted to see that flicker. And then when he stood up and he walked, uh, we supplemented that with a little, uh, a little uh, gag light, I guess you would say. Um, of Christmas lights taped onto a piece of foam core, and they just kind of added enough ambient light that as he walked out of that fire light, it kind of picked him up and worked out really nicely. Coincidentally, Stranger Things had just come out whenever Gabe kind of had this idea, and we definitely were inspired by uh, Stranger Things and some of the looks and things in there. And so we threw that track in at the very end as kind of a, a nod towards Stranger Things, uh, that kind of 80s vibe that we all love. Uh, and uh, it's really kind of the perfect way to end it, I think. We were all exhausted, incredibly tired. I don't think I've ever not wanted to carry equipment out at the end of a shoot um, as bad as I didn't want to at the end of that one. Um, I was literally, I think, dehydrating and cramping and we had a quarter of a mile to hike this stuff out of there. And so um, that was not fun, but uh, we got what we needed and was really pleased with um, the final product. I was really proud of Gabe. I thought Gabe did um, a very, very good job, incredible job really especially the very first time he's ever directed. Um, he managed the set well, kept us moving forward, um, you know, knew when he had what he needed and said, let's move on. Um, and then when there were times when, um, you know, he needed advice or thoughts or input or help, he asked for that and he got that. And, um, you know, he took that when he needed to take it. Uh, directing for the first time was pretty overwhelming at first. Um, it's easy to look at something and be like, wow, that's never, there's no way I can do this. Like, I would probably be better off if I just handed this off to Austin or, or somebody who knew what they were doing. All through the day, leading up to the shoot, I was a nervous wreck because I had no idea how this was gonna work out. I mean, it's my first time ever doing anything like that, you know. 
I'm only 19 years old, everybody on the crew is older than me, so it's like, how do I tell somebody what I want without like, when I'm, you know, younger, like it, it seemed odd to me at first, but everybody's like so great on our team. And once, once we got everything unloaded and everything set up and we are finally shooting everything, I think that's when all the stress and all the worry about if this was going to work out just went away and I could kind of, I finally got into a groove and just it felt, you know, it's in those moments that you realize like this is awesome, like this is what I want to do, this is my passion, like I love this more than anything. Hello. Hello. You're looking at an idiot. Alright. Anything else, Gabe? There you are. That's a wrap. Yay. Alright, clean up crew. Are they coming? Oh, uh, yeah, we can. I'll be in my trailer, you guys. I hate being in front of the camera. Do you? Yeah, I do. Why? Because I get all sweaty and my voice gets all shaky and I can't keep my, my train of thought and it sucks. That's all. <laughs> I always hate saying hey guys at the beginning but it, I always end up saying that. I don't want to go. Hey guys, <laughs> today we're going to be giving you some behind the scenes, behind the scenes, behind the scenes, scenes, scenes. <laughs> the Creek film is the bomb diggity. The bomb.com. Wicked. Coral. Oh, didn't see you there. Welcome to the Creek Film. <laughs>